Welcome to Saw Logs Plastic Hubs, Jim Dedman. Hope you enjoyed today's video that I put together for you. We're always doing something interesting here in the shop. Stick around, watch the video, enjoy, comment. Thank you. You know, sometimes you watch too much YouTube when you see somebody do something, you say, man, I need that. And uh, you're fighting changing these chuck jaws and using the Allen wrench just like I've always done. And then it dawned on me. I watched a video of Ray's garage, Ray Canilla, one of the more, you know, a little uh, better known YouTube creators. And he was doing a job one day and doing just what I'm doing right here, changing his chuck jaws, and he's just using the impact wrench. You know, and it didn't dawn on me to just right then. I said, man, all right, just a second ago, and I said, it's a great deal. So I grabbed up an air spare socket out of the thing, cut off a spare eight, eight millimeter Allen wrench, and now I've got a tool. Saves a lot of energy right there in time. I might have remembered that I made these tools up a while back, and, and this is the one I cut a wrong dimension on. I was going to use it for a dual purpose tool and all that good stuff. So this is going to be a little noisy to interrupt the cut. But what I'm going to do, this is a, a, a this comes from my old employer, a good friend of mine I play golf with. Told me, said if I can ever get you anything you need, let me know. And I, I, I texted him the other day and told him I wanted this particular gear blade. This particular, what's wrong with this is what they call double cut. Now this is an interrupted cut of 86 foot. And what we got here is this part was double cut. I'm going to use this as a press plate armor. What I'm doing is boring out, which is no size to it, the, the part that's defective. And you want to hear this interrupted cut thing because what it is. And that's all I'm doing here is just clearing out where this is. I'm just wanting to clear this up. The other thing I want to do is face this off. Make sure both ends are flat. So I'll bring you back when I get it bored out. This is 8620 forging, by the way. I'll tell you the first thing I'm gonna do now is I've already got down to basically what is the good map. And we pretty well bored it to that. So all I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and take a light finishing cut. Just remove I'm going right up to the face and I'm not going to touch the old face. I'm not basically what I'm interested in now. Oh, that's good. I'm pleading. That's all I wanted to bore it out. So you see now I have cut out all the all that interrupted cut. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to use a tool I haven't used much and we'll see how it works here in a second. Now one thing I'm going to do here, and again, I'm, you know, you have to check for all this clearance. This is a fairly large part, so 
what I'm going to do is I want this to be flat. To get it flat, I'm going to have to face it off. So, so the plan here is it's fairly a simple facing operation. I want it to be certain thickness, and I probably I want to make sure each side's flush. And I'm not sure about these parts. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm doing right now is I'm going in and I'm starting on the inside of the part here. Uh, there's These parts are designed to go into transmission, so there's a step to them. This is a main shaft gear for a uh, Eaton Fuller Ultra Shift. Uh, what it is so what that's what it is and what it was and the reason the part was scrapped out is what they call double cut the operation the, the gear blank was turned and the piece you see me cut the splines out there's a, a shaping machine and with that shaping machine internal shaping machine it uh, does the shaping now what I'm doing is I'm using this tool that Tom sent me down the hilltop. Uh, it's the one that you use the side the insert with. Because this is going to be primarily, everything I'm doing here is going to be primarily facing. And uh, so what I'm doing right now more or less is turning this part flush. I want this part to be flat on both sides or make a press plate. So I'm thinking that I'm just about now flat enough that I can go ahead and set my lathe up and face the hole whole shooting match off here at one time flush now. So I want these parts to be flush. Because they're going on my press table so I want everything, you know, within somewhat of a reason parallel. Now it's not going to be as parallel as these things was made at Eaton. I can guarantee you that, but these parts are usually within a couple, within about 2,000, so... I just don't think my lathe's going to give me about 2,000 parallel, but, you know, if I'm in five or so, six or seven would be really good. So, basically what I'm doing is just truing it up now to get me the, the parallel that I'm looking for, for my press plate. And the reason I wanted this is, you see, it's got about a two-inch board. So when I decide or have to do any keyway broaching of parts, most of the parts will be smaller. I can lay it support the part and set it right down the middle. So that's kind of what this idea I have. And I had the ability to get somebody to get me a part. I would not bore something out for this. I would tell you that the plates would be probably perfectly fine. In fact, I want this three quarter. And what I'll probably do is this is the side that it'd be cut down to give me the three-quarter thickness. So what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to probably flip it more than one time. To give me a true face. I'll come back and reface this again. I want this slick, and once I get this slicked up, the width I'm wanting. I mean, they turn their carbide pretty hot. That's why you see them pretty finished this on it, too, by the way. Alright, let me let you go. Now, all I'm doing here is facing this part. I want to make sure it's flush. I'm not sure where these hubs stick out or not. So, basically, I'm just going to kind of run it down in there and see, and if it does, I want everything to be flush or something. Actually, it looks like 
to ask my opinion that the hub sticks out more than the RD. This has a recessed hub in it. See, what I'm wanting to do is get these parts where... Well, I didn't do that. Let me go back. I about to mess. Bozo just about to pay us a visit. Now what we want to do is that's going to be our finish. So you see with, with these gears they were designed and made to go in here and they had clearances and such that they were supposed to, they're trying to maintain. I'm straining it today. You hear it grunt. There is that much difference in the face and the gear on this. My little Grizzly's grunting, folks. <coughs> and this is about the lowest. The only lower gear is 75, so <coughs> I would, I could have, <coughs> I'm taking some material off here. Really, that's only about 50,000. You hear it rolling. This is 8620, so by the way, these are forging, so these are a little, a little different, actually. Got coal rolling here. I know dang well what these chips will do to you. I got the stitches to prove it. So, you all see a a, a grizzly lathe work right here you're getting to see it because I'm running it working it pretty darn hard see I want this to be flush and I'm going to flip it over and get the thickness that I'm wanting I won't take no more of these cuts by the way you heard her grunt when she went in there too Old Grizzly grunted. Well, what I'm doing is I'm using my plier because I'm not getting no chip control because I really can't get no warranty in. I'm really running it in there a lot. Now this should be a really light cut here. You just barely can't see us. All right. So you see what I've done. I'm going to run back and take a spring pass now that I've done this. So I'll bring you back with a spring pass. But this is a little 5,000s pass. And we got a smoke cloud in the shop. <coughs> so... <coughs> And didn't realize I was going to hold metal and needed to get out my uh, cool mist. So it's sort of smoky in here right now. And these little lathes, <coughs> you can work them. You got to be careful with them. That's a good example right here. A, a good example of how what you sometimes have to do. Uh, so we got to do some chip breaking. We'll probably have to turn the mangle. Around. This side, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything broke up. Or the places, the biggest thing I got to hit is the OD on this one because. I've not cut the chamfers off, and then I want to cut this down to a certain thickness, so that's when we flip it over, back over. Let me sheen it down to the thickness that I want. So 
So there we go. We're going to have a, a solid plate. And this is about a half inch thick in there. So it's a good bit, a fairly thick piece in there. And for kiwi broaching, <coughs> I'm not worried as much because I'm just going to, you know, that's what I want this is to support parts to, to do kiwi broaching with. <coughs> I don't think, I, <coughs> excuse me, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about that moving too much in the center. I'm going to press harder, I'll put a plate on. There we go. Now that's space. Now all I gotta do is I'm gonna pull. Well, it's while the camera's running. I'm just gonna break it loose. I'm gonna use this tool here to cut, put the angle, the chamfer that I want on it. And we're gonna have it. And we'll go ahead and we'll. There we go. Still a little bit of the edge right there. So, let's see what I've got down here. Yeah, that's a little bit sharp too. I'm going to have to kind of <coughs> come in there and do something there. And I don't know what I got. Let me figure this out a second. Figured it out. It took me a second, but I got it. I happen to look. You know, I've got some symmetric stuff I've made up. I'm just going to take this WMG here and just set it in there just a little. I may end up having to tell you what, let's do. I don't do this very often, <coughs> like a lot of people, but this would work real good. You know, and you have, <coughs> see, I get us a little bit of a, there we go. That'll give us a nice corner break right there. Let's see how that looks. How it's nice and smooth. There we go. That's good to go now. Let me just see where I'm at my thickness. Checked it out and I've got about a... What we have is about an inch. So it's about an inch. In. There's no need in going in here. Let's see how I can get this inside with this a little bit. Alright. Uh, and break all these corners. And then while I'm at it. one needs a little more that's good this right here needs a little bit more we'll have to these forges are always got a little bit of draft to them and so to get a good get a corner break you sometimes have to go just a little more they got a Pretty good little bit of draft to them, but some run out. Just enough I wanted to break, so I got a. That's why you see it look like this too, so that 
see I've got a small break here. There's a little bit of a draft in these fortunes. Okay, well there's my plate. I'll clean it up. Okay, right there on my my blue my blue cloth on the milling table is the completed job. But this is the precision. So this is the side that I want it flush, press to. This is the side that's going to be down most of the time. Both of these are now flush, they're oiled up and pressed. And basically that's why I wanted this gear because it's pretty sturdy and give me some good diameter for the press. I'll go lay it on the press and show you what we're talking about. You can see why I wanted to put this on the press. So you can set a, anything around to put a keyway brooch in it and you got all this support. And even though this press is not much wider, but you still got a lot more support like that. So that's just another tool in the arsenal. And considering that I had a friend that could get me the piece that I wanted uh, for basically, you know, a donation to the shop. So that worked out pretty good. And I'm well pleased with that. That's just a simple little thing. Just took some machining to get it, to make it a little more usable. So you see now with everything the way I want it, it's going to be just fine. So now I'll put this here in storage and this is just another piece for the press. Thank you for watching today's video. This is Jim. This, by the way, I will remind you, this is a copyrighted production of James Deadman Sawlogs Plastic Hubs for your personal enjoyment here on YouTube. The other thing I want to do is quickly thank everybody that's out here, that's visited my channel, that views, that comments. Our channel is growing thanks to you, and I will send you a sincere thanks. Thank you, and have a great day, and we will see you in the next video.